And I turned to my friend Ann Coulter, who's written another bang-up column. And in this one, I don't know if she's trying to curry favor with yours truly or whatever, but she mentioned in, of course, the proper disparaging tone, the, the American city where I, I, I have my broadcast studios, Portland, Oregon. Uh, and I appreciated that mention in there. Not of me, but of of the, <laughs> as you put it, armed and masked and left-wing brown shirts patrolling the streets of Portland, Oregon, beating up suspected Trump supporters. You know, it it really is a different America these days, isn't it? Yes, and th- that was my thought, um, considering, I mean, I think like like lots of people, Crazy people are really not helping gun rights supporters, Second Amendment supporters. Um, I mean, it's unbelievable that our constitutional rights seem to hinge on insane people doing the right thing. <laughs> That's what we have to count on. And and there has been, um, I mean, it is, it is a coincidence, as cancer clusters are generally coincidences. Um, it's called the law of large numbers. Um, in a country of 340 million people, there, there will be, you know, weird trends, and you try to read something into that. There has, does seem to have been an uptick this year in, in the mass shootings by crazy people. And as you and I have talked about before, for, I mean, not just for the shooting aspect, but for the, um, you know, macheteing people aspect and blowing up school aspect. That was the biggest mass killing in U.S. history, by the way. A guy used a bomb to blow up a school in Michigan. A bomb in a wagon, by the way, was for really old school treatment, right? <laughs> right. Well, you are good. <laughs> um, the crazy people pushing pushing people onto subway tracks. I mean, I do think the we've gotten a little too, you know, there's a pendulum on these things, and, and too many crazy people are not being treated properly. A lot of them can have, you know, perfectly normal lives. But beyond that, like a lot of people, and that's what got me thinking, um, you know, for the first time, because there's been this spate of mass shooting, you start thinking, is there anything else that could be done? Um, could we have an age limit? Um, you know, they're talking about, and you see some of these um, apparently reasonable liberals, not the crazy ones like Beto O'Rourke, who just comes out and says, confiscate all the guns. But, you know, coming to us and soccer mom types, come on, there's got to be something we can do to limit this, besides the obvious things that you and I have talked about. Um, and the problem with that is, as I describe in my column, um, you, you, they appeal to us, you know, in good faith. Can we come together and, and put together some common sense gun regulations? Um, well, no, these are people who have no, no common sense, no belief in, in legal process, um, um, no good faith at all. They're not honest brokers. And I go through several examples of this, starting with Proposition 187 in California back in 1994, where 60% of Californians, including a huge majority of African Americans, of Asians, of, of uh, one-third of Hispanics, um, and of course a huge majority of, of white Californians, voting to stop funding government services for illegal aliens. Um, but no, the ACLU just says, oh no, yeah, we, we'll take care of that. Um, we'll take this to a Carter-appointed left-wing judge, and she'll hold the law, or the proposition voted on by Californians. I mean, you don't get any more direct democracy. No, we'll just say it's unconstitutional. And then they do the same thing to bring it up to somewhat more recently with the, with the gay marriage initiative. Again, California. Not Mississippi, not Alabama. Californians go to the ballot and vote pretty substantially, 52 to 47 percent, that a marriage is between a man and a woman. And again, liberals say, um, no, no problem. We'll, we'll just take this to a gay federal district court judge who's about to retire. He'll overturn it. And, and oh, yeah, don't, you don't worry about that little Democratic vote thing. You have Deborah Messing in Hollywood collecting names of Trump supporters to create a new Hollywood blacklist for anyone, anyone who supported Trump. I mean, you have to worry that even with the mental health stuff, um, you could get a, a liberal family member and a liberal shrink to step forward to the judge and say this person is crazy. He voted for Trump. Um, so I'm sorry, the left has given up um, any capacity to persuade those of us who would be willing to to count on the bulwarks of of legal process in this country and and the the general common sense undergirding all the institutions in our society. No, they don't have common sense. They don't believe in legal process. So no, we're we're not going to put an asterisk on the Second Amendment. No, and I don't want to do that either. I do have one idea. Let me throw you a wild idea that occurred to me today. 
about this issue, about this very issue, because the big one they seem to want to, you know, focus on is lack of universal background checks. Well, universal background oh, checks no. means I can't sell a gun or loan a gun to my brother-in-law because it's illegal. It's an illegal transfer if you're in universal background checks. And I happen to live in a state where I can't. I can loan one. I can loan a gun to a, an immediate family member, but not a cousin. And, and some of this, it just, it sounds like the rules of the Catholic Church, you know, it's, it's complicated. Right. <laughs> if it happens on a Tuesday, but on a full moon and, you know, and all this stuff. So here's my idea, and it might appeal to you as a lawyer. If I choose to sell a gun to somebody or give a gun to somebody, and I don't run through the background check, you know, because in, pla- in certain places like Texas, you can still do a private sale and you don't have to go through a background check. Right. If I want to be protected from legal liability, I run them through a background check. If I don't, if I say, no, I trust my friend. Kind of like Kevin Hart trusted his friend to drive his car the other day, uh, and it didn't work out so well. Yeah. Then I am subject to both criminal and civil liability. Now, if you said, but, well, well, hold on, you're, you're putting gun ownership. No, you're just saying, Lars, if you decide to loan a gun to a, an old, a longtime friend and you trust him, uh, you're trusting him that if you don't run him through a background check, then uh, you may be subject to criminal penalties and give the give the jury the right. I mean, right now, I bet a Texas jury would probably tell the guy who sold that gun to the otherwise disqualified from owning a gun, uh, most recent shooter, uh, how long do you want to throw him in jail? They'd probably say five years. And they'd probably say, plus, we're going to hit you with some financial penalties because your actions caused something horrible to happen. A gun went into the hands of a guy who was legally disqualified from owning one, but he dodged the system. That could make both free market folks and uh, the and both gun owners and 2A f- fans like me and the liberals happy by saying, okay, we're going to hold somebody responsible if they do this. And yes, a lot of those straw purchaser laws are on the books, and I think it's a great idea. And I'll have more to say about it probably in an upcoming column. Yep. Um, this week's column was, and I, I totally agree with everything you said, um, this week's column, I mean, to take the example you used, Yeah, even a Texas jury would give you five years. Um, I suspect a California jury would give you the death penalty. (laughs) That's my point now. When when we no longer can count on just basic common sense and and good faith of our fellow citizens, which I think is quite a change from, um, I mean, certainly a change since before Trump was elected. That was that was a huge leap. But even before that, a change from the fifties and sixties. Um, a little bit into the 70s, the left just started to go crazy and would not utterly results-oriented. I'm not talking about Proposition 187 and, and Proposition 8, the gay marriage initiative, um, because because I don't like the results. I don't, as it happens. Um, I like the results from, from when people voted through democracy. It's that this isn't a fair process. Nope. And liberals don't play by the rules. So, no, I, I think it's very dangerous to come up with, and, and for, for any, even the policies I support coming up with, be very careful because we are not dealing with honest brokers on no, the other side. Because when they get a result they like, then they don't challenge it in court. When they get a result they don't like, they say, well, to heck with the process, let's throw it out. That doesn't work in sports, it doesn't work in life, and it certainly doesn't work in uh, in a representative form of government like ours. The column is well worth a read. Also, her books, e- uh, In Trump We Trust, E Pluribus Awesome, and Resistance is Futile. She is Ann Coulter, and we always appreciate her insights. Ann, thank you.